from Southwest Florida's news leader. This is Wink News this morning. Good morning. Thank you so much for joining us for the 9 o'clock hour of Wink News this morning here on WXCW. I'm Teresa O'Shea. And I'm Sean Kreisman. A lot to get to the next 60 minutes, but first, here's a look at the best video and sounds from overnight and this morning in the Wink News Eye Opener. It tells me that it's a very sick individual. 86 degrees will tell you if there's any rain in the seven day forecast coming up. All right, Eric, thank you. And this morning we're continuing our complete team coverage of the deadly shooting at ZombieCon in Fort Myers. This video right here is new surveillance video in from Los Cabos Cantina. The shooting happened right in front of that restaurant. Yeah, this shows the scene, uh, the street rather, only seconds before the shooting. You can see people turn, they start to run quickly. They're looking at what's happening in this area. Crime Stopper says it's received already more than 50 tips about who the shooter may be. Wing News reporter Stephanie Suskind, she is live downtown Fort Myers. She's picked up our continuing coverage. Hey, Steph. Good morning. While police are encouraged by all of the information they're getting, while they have released the description of a suspect, which we'll tell you more about in just a minute, they have not named a specific suspect. And while they continue to sort through all of your witness video and pictures and information, city leaders are looking at how to prevent something like this and how to make the city a little bit safer. Now, city council members have talked about a variety of different options. They say they will be reassessing guidelines for large events downtown and focused on security. Mayor Randy Henderson says he's looking at putting more surveillance cameras around the area and some other council members are talking about limiting when alcohol is served on the street during events like this. The big question remains whether this was a targeted shooting or a random act of violence. City leaders say it can be impossible to prevent or predict something like this. If someone has the intent to do this, it's very, very difficult to stop someone that just has this in their mind to do it. I believe we had a random act happen on Saturday night. Homicide and violent crime is so difficult to predict and prevent because it's an instant move. You, you, I mean, it's just that quick. Now, of course, there were dozens of police officers on scene that night, and the police chief tells Wink News an officer was right by that victim within 30 seconds after those shots rang out. Now, here's that description for you of the suspect that police say they are looking for. They say it's a white or Hispanic man in his late teens to early 20s. They say that night he was wearing a black T-shirt and a black and red baseball cap and had a semi-automatic handgun. They also say that he was seen running in the opposite direction, heading west toward the federal courthouse after the shots rang out. Of course, if you have any information, you can call Crime Stoppers and remain anonymous. That number, 1-800-780-TIPS. We also have more information on how to submit your tips to Fort Myers Police. You can find that on our website, winknews.com. Just look for this story. We've also been talking to the ZombieCon organizers about what the future holds for the event. I'll tell you more about that coming up at 930. Reporting live in downtown Fort Myers, Stephanie Suska. Wink News this morning. Stephanie, thank you. And one more note to pass along this morning. Today, local youth pastors will gather downtown for a prayer vigil for those affected by the recent wave of violence in Fort Myers. It's happening at the Centennial Park Fountain, which is located on First Street in downtown Fort Myers. It's happening at 5 o'clock this evening. Of course, we know how important the story is to all of you here in Southwest Florida, to us as well. There's even a hashtag coming out of it on social media. It's hashtag love Fort Myers. We'll explain a little bit more about that coming up at 9 30. Sean. All right, thanks, Trace. Moving on this morning, we are working to learn more about a crime scene investigation in Lehigh Acres. Lee County deputies say they were called to a home in the 500 block of Alabama Road South around 530 Monday evening. Deputies say the investigation is still active, but this is an isolated incident and the community is not in danger. Count on week news for any updates as we do learn more. And Week News has new information this morning about the search for the missing cargo ship El Faro. Florida U.S. Senator Bill Nelson says the National Transportation Safety Board will give a preliminary report sometime today. Meanwhile, as we speak, a U.S. Navy ship is on its way to the Bahamas to help look for that missing ship. The USNS Apache will bring equipment and investigators to the search site. It's expected to arrive later on this week, likely by about tomorrow. Four men from southwest Florida were on board the El Faro when it sank. Senator Nelson spoke on the Senate floor Monday in part, praising the Coast Guard for its search and rescue efforts and acknowledging the chain challenges faced when searching for that ship. Since the hurricane was still in the vicinity, it took our search and rescue efforts another two days until 
it would subside enough so that the U.S. Coast Guard could get in there, supplemented by the United States Navy, and start looking for survivors. Navy officials hope the ship will help find Alfaro's data recorder. Alfaro got caught in Hurricane Joaquin earlier this month and is believed to have sunk in 15,000 feet of water. Right now, we're still waiting for the father of missing baby Chance Walsh to arrive at the Sarasota County Jail. Joseph Walsh is being extradited from prison in South Carolina. He's expected to face a murder charge once he is in custody here. Chance's mother, Kristen Burry, arrived in Sarasota County last week and was almost immediately charged with her son's death. Baby Chance Walsh disappeared from his home in Northport several weeks ago. Sarasota County deputies say they found infant remains that they believe are that of baby Chance, but are still waiting for confirmation from the medical examiner. And today, the trial expected to resume for the man accused of a triple murder in Lee County. Wesnell Isaac was arrested in Haiti last year after a seven-year-long manhunt. Investigators say he was the head of a Haitian gang when he killed three men in Lehigh Acres back in 2007. Isaac's trial was delayed because one of his lawyers collapsed in court. Got wake news for the latest updates in the trial coming up today in our later newscasts. This morning, double amputee Olympic runner Oscar Pistorius is out of jail and under house arrest in South Africa. A jury convicted Pistorius of manslaughter for the shooting death of his girlfriend, Reva Steenkamp, back in 2013. The sentence was five years, but he barely served one, spending only 263 days in jail. Officials say Pistorius was put under, quote, correctional supervision. That happened Monday night. Also this morning, federal officials are investigating a high-level security breach involving the personal emails of two top national security officials. Authorities are trying to locate an anonymous hacker who allegedly broke into the emails of CIA Director John Brennan and Homeland Security Secretary Jay Johnson. In response, the White House called on Congress to pass cybersecurity legislation held up in the Senate. Now at 9, a new CNN ORC poll finds Donald Trump and Ben Carson now stand alone at the top of the Republican field. It found Carson has gained eight points and joins Trump as the only two candidates with support above 20 percent. Meanwhile, Carly Fiorina lost 11 points in the last month, declining from 15 percent support in second place to 4 percent in a tie for seventh place. And a gender gap has reemerged in the data in the last month. Carson matches Trump's support among women with 23% backing each. Jeb Bush is behind at 9%, Mike Huckabee at 7%, and Fiorina and Marco Rubio have each 6% support among GOP women. Trump has larger edges over Carson among men, 31% versus 21%, with Rubio at 10%. Right now, Vice President Joe Biden is paying tribute to former Vice President Walter Mondale at the White House as he continues to mull over a presidential run himself. The buildup comes as current Democratic frontrunner Hillary Clinton gears up for her testimony before the House Benghazi Committee this week. Sources say Vice President Biden is set to announce either today or tomorrow if he will run for president. On the Republican side, meanwhile, the Secret Service is reviewing requests for protection from the Donald Trump and Ben Carson campaigns. Also today, we're expected to learn whether Democratic presidential candidate Jim Webb will change parties. Webb said he's been considering running as an independent, but will make an announcement about his candidacy, his campaign, and his views of the political parties later today. He's complained about how little time he had to answer questions during the debate last week. He says it was rigged in terms of who was going to get time on the floor. A CBS poll shows that Webb has only 2% of from voters. And more new information this morning out of Campaign Central as today, former Florida Governor Charlie Crist is expected to announce his candidacy for Congress. Crist is expected to hold a news conference starting at 1030 this morning, a little over an hour from now. He's looking to replace Representative David Jolly and will be running as a Democrat. You may remember Crist served as governor in 2007, then decided to run for Senate in 2010, but he lost to Marco Rubio. He then changed parties from Republican to Independent and ran against Governor Rick Scott as a Democrat in the race for governor last year. On new this morning, Netflix is bringing back a favorite TV series that has a lot of people excited. Gilmore Girls on their way. That's right. Lorelai and Rory are coming back. The series ended back in 2007. Netflix brought the first seven seasons to stream. And now, according to TV Line, they'll be bringing it back. New episodes on a limited basis if it gets approved. There will be four 90-minute episodes. But for some fans, that might just be enough. 
cast negotiations right now are underway. You've seen success with things like this when they do movies like yeah. you know, Entourage, Sex in the City, all those kinds of things. So Talking about a cast negotiation, they did it right here. Coming up in less than three minutes, it's finally here. The new trailer for Star Wars, The Force Awakens. Can you tell I'm excited? Yes. South. Boy, it's popular. We're going to talk about it. It's coming up. That's right, and after a brush with burglars, an Australian scientist developed a new technique to dust for fingerprints. It even makes them glow. We'll tell you how he did it coming up in our 9.30 half hour. The week news time is 9.11 on your Tuesday morning. Welcome back to Wake News this morning. The latest trailer for the new Star Wars movie is out, and the internet and Sean Kreisman are both going a little bit crazy. <laughs> a lot morning. of us went crazy in the newsroom. It's sort of impossible to really know how many times this trailer has been watched. I myself have watched this trailer here multiple times this morning when I should time. have been working. I know, I was watching this. On the official YouTube channel of Star Wars, this new trailer has been watched eight and a half million times already. At last check, that's probably up. That's less than 12 hours, and it doesn't count the views on Facebook, Twitter, and other sites. Can't believe that. It's a little more than two minutes long, so we can't exactly show you all of it, but we can show you a little clip. Take a look. Nothing will stand in our way. I will finish what you started. There are stories about what happened. It's true. There it is. The trailer dropped during halftime of Monday Night Football, so you can imagine a lot of eyes on it then already. And about an hour before that, tickets went on sale for the December 18th premiere. The influx of fans trying to buy tickets actually crashed a number of websites. We'll get to that a little bit later. We talked to Hannah Daniels on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange. But man, there's a lot of buzz about this this morning. I got chills when I, you hear the music come back. It's amazing. You got super fans. A little like excited. Yeah. As we said, the trailer premiered during ESPN's Monday Night Football, and honestly, it was probably the highlight of the entire game for a lot of people. I would say so. A very sloppy game between the New York Giants and Philadelphia Eagles. The NFC East matchup had seven total turnovers and 21 penalties. Ooh. The only decent-looking drive came at the start of the game with Eli Manning leading a no-huddle drive for touchdown. After that, it was just a hard game to watch. Very frustrating, even if you aren't a fan of those teams. But the Eagles, they got the win, 27 to seven. Holy cow. Eric Stone, did you watch this? I, you know, I talk about the Patriots, but I'm an Eagles fan too because I did live in South Jersey until right. I was 12. So I'm very excited. The Eagles are now in first place over the Giants Whatever. and I'm the Sean's Cowboys. Cowboys. Come on. Not for long. Look, oh. you know, Tony Romo's coming back when they play Miami. And when that happens, it's a new team. Well, you might be That's able to beat I Miami. Stand. That'd be you know, good. I'm going to step away. Something from so a little bit of this conversation. <laughs> what do we See, have Trace is from North Jersey, so she likes <laughs> I'm the Giants. I'm a Giants fan by yeah, birth. Well, yeah. That's right. yeah. Well, weather wise, things looking uh, not so bad this morning, in fact. A that's lot of sunshine thing. to start the day. And uh, most of the rain will stay on the East Coast, partly cloudy. A uh, couple of showers possible tomorrow afternoon. Otherwise, it uh, looks like we stay pretty dry through the weekend. Thank you, Eric. And in just a few weeks, one local high school band is going to be on their way to New York City. Yeah, they are the only marching band in the state to perform in the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. So where's Wig now? Wig News reporter John Treeweiler is live with a beautiful outfit on. John. <laughs> Thank you so much, Sean and Therese. Yes, good morning to you. I feel like I'm a part of the band this morning. I've been dressed up like them the whole morning. Uh, Justin here with us again, the band director. Shall we see him do it? This is kind of the grand finale for us this morning. Yeah, this is everything on Herald Square. So here so we go. Let's go ahead. Lindsay, our drum major, will uh, kick it off for us with the whistle. Again, this mock-up here on the... And it's going to be just like that in New York City on Thanksgiving Day. Sean and Therese, they're going to march off, and in real life, they would continue on and just end the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. Pretty cool stuff. You'll be able to see them on Thanksgiving Day, guys. Wow, and we are looking forward to that. I can't believe that's not already considered perfected because it looks so good. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's pretty neat. John, you were out there. They, why aren't they letting you play? 
Uh, well, you know, I, I've been, I got promoted to drum major earlier, and you know, oh. I'm letting the kids play the instruments a little bit. I'll take <laughs> a small to let break. The kids do Moved it. up quick. Yeah. Take a small break. I may get back at it someday. You never know. Yeah, right, you relax. We'll Don. check back in with you just a little bit. And remember, we do want to feature your nonprofit organization's special fundraising event or a unique attraction or Where's Wink Now segment in the morning. Just send us an email to this morning at wakenews.com. Let us know what's going on. We'll come out, have some fun, and share some good news about what's happening with our entire community. It is 921, turning 922. We'll be right back in just a couple minutes. Direction. No words exchange, no time to exchange. And all the little answer my ship. Let it go, let it go. I am one with the wind and sky. Let it go, let it go. Does that song ever get old? Yes, it does. We need to let that song oh, go, but okay. uh, we're not going to because this morning Frozen is also taking over the skies. Yeah, WestJet's newest plane is inspired by the movie and will fly actually right out of Orlando. It features characters Anna and Elsa on the tail of the plane and Olaf toward the front of the plane. The inside is also decked out with a cold theme toward the back of the plane and warm in the front. The company says the paint job took 21 days to complete. Pretty and, cool. Yeah, it really doesn't stop there. For kids. I know, not bad. This one too with Halloween less than two weeks away. Hopefully all of you have some costume ideas. Uh, as for a few kids here in Florida though, one major company is donating costumes. According to the Orlando Sentinel, Disney is giving away frozen costumes to schools in Central Florida. Disney needed space for new stock in its warehouse, so it decided to donate the costumes as an incentive for literacy and good behavior. The costumes retail for just under 65 bucks each. That's saving some families a lot of money for a good reason this Halloween. Yeah, take advantage of that. Central cool. Florida, nice. And all new on Wink, all of you pet owners already know this, but dressing up on Halloween is not just for humans. That's right, the sentiment is very real for the folks at the YouTube channel Hello Denizen. They are the producers of the Tiny Hand Hamster videos you may have seen, the latest being Tiny Hamster's Halloween. Uh, you may remember the video last month of the, the New York City rat carrying the pizza. Well, that's what the Tiny Hamster is this Halloween. His friends, a guinea pig and a bunny, are going as the airplane scene from Mission Impossible Rogue Nation. And, well, you could guess Donald Trump. Uh, you know, I'm pretty impressed that A, Tiny Hamster has friends, and B, that he's <laughs> so up on the trends because the rat pizza thing was, was very current and trendy. And he ventures out. He's got friends in all places, guinea pig, rabbit. Yeah, diverse. Over to sports. We're going to go this morning for you. Starting today, the Chicago Cubs have three games at home and then National League Championship Series. They need at least two to stay alive. Chicago dropped the first two games in New York against the Mets. Jacob Dagram gets the ball for New York today as the Cubs will send out Kyle Hendricks. The next three of the series are all in Chicago, so we'll see if home field advantage works in favor for Chicago. Well, it certainly worked for the Toronto Blue Jays. Down two games to none to the Kansas City Royals. The Blue Jays won game three at home. They previously uh, dropped the first two in Kansas City. Game four is tomorrow again in Toronto. Kansas City is seeking its second straight World Series appearance. Team lost to the San Francisco Giants last year. Time's 927. We'll be right back. The winner is Marcus Stroman. The loser is Johnny Cueto. All right, time now is 930 and the opening bell at the New York Stock Exchange just rang. Let's check in with Wink News Money Watch reporter Hannah Daniels at the New York Stock Exchange floor for all your business and consumer news. Good morning. Good morning, Sean and Therese. The opening bell just rang. Let's see how the markets are doing so far. Right now, the Dow is down 45 points. Apple has pulled hundreds of apps from its app store after reports they've been accessing users' private information. Source DNA says they found over 250 apps that violated Apple's security guidelines by collecting personal emails and device ID numbers. Apple says they are working closely with developers to make sure the apps are safe for their customers. All in a day's work for media mogul Oprah Winfrey after Oprah announced she would buy a 10% stake in Weight Watchers. The company had its busiest trading day in its history. Shares soared and the stock closed up 105%. In case you were wondering, Oprah made 70 million dollars off that deal. She seems to have the Midas touch. Sean and Therese. That's for sure. Yeah, for sure. Okay, Hannah, Star Wars fans were a force to reckon with last night. I was a big one too. A lot of people talking. You can get your tickets ahead of time, but there was a little bit of a hiccup. Tell me about this. That's right. The force wasn't with too many online ticket sellers Monday night. Sites like Fandango and MovieTickets.com crashed. 
After Star Wars fans tried to secure their pre-sale tickets for The Force Awakens opening December 18th, the tickets for the highly anticipated movie went on sale hours earlier than expected. Sean and Therese. Well, Hannah, we hear that you are a little bit of a Star Wars fan yourself. Is that true? I am, and I went on the Fandango website last night and was not able to get the tickets, unfortunately. I'm going to try again today, though. You, you I, was, I was able to get tickets this morning, Hannah. I have an extra oh. one, but you have to come to Florida. Fly on down. Done. Done. Deal. We're going to get it done. <laughs> Hannah Daniels, thanks so much for uh, talking to us this morning uh, on the New York Stock Exchange. We appreciate that. All right, now at 9.30, we're getting back to our continuing coverage of the deadly shooting at ZombieCon in Fort Myers. Wink News reporter Stephanie Suskind joins us live now in downtown Fort Myers with more on city leaders' plans to improve security in our area. Stephanie, good morning. Good morning, Therese and Sean. Of course, this incident just heightens everyone's awareness of the need for safety and security in our downtown area, especially for large scale events like ZombieCon. And last night at the city council meeting, some council members talked about ways that they can help beef up that safety and security presence. They talked about limiting the amount of time that alcohol is served on the street during large events like that. You often see the bars not only inside the restaurants and establishments, Establishments, but outside on the street as well. Wink News also spoke to Mayor Randy Henderson, who says that he'd like to see more surveillance cameras around the area, especially in the downtown area. We do know that at least 30 Fort Myers police officers were working this event on Saturday night. There was also another security firm that was here as well. The Fort Myers police chief tells us that an officer was with that gunshot victim within 30 seconds of those shots ringing out. So there certainly was a heavy police presence here. But we also spoke to organizers of ZombieCon about what the future holds. They said they will have the event next year, but they may need to make some changes, especially to how people get into the event and how to keep people out who shouldn't be there. They probably did not come through the entrances. Unfortunately, the barricades, we can't have every single barricade manned. So people were just coming in through the barricades off the street. We're looking at all possibilities and maybe moving out of downtown is just one of them. Of course, count on Wink News to keep you updated on the ongoing investigation. We'll give you another look at that suspect description coming up in about 20 minutes. Reporting live in downtown Fort Myers, Stephanie Suskind, Wink News this morning. Stephanie, thank you. And we want to remind you, in the wake of this tragedy, people here in Fort Myers actually banding together to portray a positive image of the city. You might have seen this hashtag while browsing Facebook, maybe pictures like this as well. People are using that hashtag, love Fort Myers, all over the place. The posts show iconic places like the Edison Theater, the Caloosahatchee River. While these images are meant as a symbol of love, Fort Myers police still want witnesses to send them any videos, any images from that dark night if you have them. We will follow up on every single one of them and hopefully bring some quick closure to this uh, heinous crime. And Fort Myers police say all of the pictures and video pouring in are, quote, invaluable in the investigation. And all new on Wink uh, this morning, after his home was burglarized, an Australian scientist decided to take crime scene investigation right into his own hands. Through his work, Dr. Kang Ling developed a new spot forensic technique that makes fingerprints glow in only 30 seconds. The secret is a liquid uh, metal containing metal organic framework crystals that bind to the residue left behind in a fingerprint. The crystals then create an ultra thin coating that's an exact replica of the pattern of that fingerprint, which can then be easily and clearly photographed for analysis. The colors of the glow can also be changed by altering the chemical makeup of the solution. The way that stuff's advanced is amazing. If it helps us with crime, solving crimes, we'll take it. Take it. And it's a push to give a struggling economy a boost. And if tens of thousands of Australians have their way, giving a nod to a popular TV show might be the way to do it. A change.org petition calls for renaming the Australian dollar the dollary do. Yeah, it's a reference from the long-running sitcom The Simpsons. The petition states that something needed to stimulate the country's economy. And it says a currency name change would spur millions of people around the world to want to snatch up dollar dues. In less than a week, the petitions racked up more than 46,000 signatures. I have $50 dollar dues. $500 dollar dues. Yeah, as opposed this to like cost $10 50 bucks. Dues. Yeah, I can't. I That's just fun it. to say. No. Okay. It's a picture that makes you the most infamous iceberg in history, and now it's going up for auction. Now, talking about the one from Titanic, <laughs> this one here, the grainy black and white photo, was taken on the morning of April 15th, 1912 
By the time the picture was shot, the Titanic had already sunk into the Atlantic. It was snapped by the chief steward aboard the ocean liner Prince Adelbert, unaware of the Titanic's fate. Historical accounts cite the picture as possibly being of the iceberg the Titanic hit. Along with it, a note from the chief steward mentions seeing red paint visible on the iceberg. Mm. Pre-sale estimates place it between fifteen to twenty-three thousand dollars. Imagine owning that. Wow, very cool historic piece there. And I think if you look closely, you can see the door with Rose lying on it. She didn't Did make any room for Jack. No, it's awful. I can't. We're I still can't get it. over that. Yeah. Well, the world's most famous clock is showing its age. Big Ben has been striking the hour for 156 years, but lately it's started to slip a little bit. Yeah, it was out a whole six seconds last summer, and now London's iconic clock tower could go silent for the first time in eight years. The famous clock and its big bell inside of Elizabeth Tower, built in the mid-1800s, are in desperate need of repair. One source told a newspaper that lawmakers are also concerned the clock's massive hands may fall off. Something one Brit says would be like stopping the heartbeat of London. This is the marrow in our bones, this old clock. One clock. One clock. And, you know, uh, the, the thought of it not being there or one hand flying off or, heaven forbid, the thing going digital is just too <laughs> gruesome to consider. It would be a calamity, a catastrophe, a disaster. And for that reason, I suspect they will find a way around this. I agree, it would be a disaster. Right, so. Well, the repair work could put the Big Ben out of commission for about four months. What would we do? We would have to look down at our iPhones. Look at our bloody phones is what we'll have to do. <laughs> all right, now in a wink for all our northern visitors. Maybe some of you during Christmas time would hike into the woods and chop down your own Christmas tree, much like the Griswolds. Yeah, right, but we can never guarantee it was never like this one. Check this out. The Citadel Outlets in Commerce, California claims that this is the world's tallest Christmas tree. It was hoisted into the air by a crane. Take a look at how big that thing is. The tree stands at 115 feet tall. That's actually 40 feet taller than the Rockefeller Center Christmas tree, which is a big one, but that trumps it. You ask how to get it home. There it is. You've got to rent one of those big boys <laughs> to, so. to move it on into the house. Just a living room to find to put it in might be a little tough. Yeah, we're going to need a really big house. Well, now this morning, there will be so many good ways to raise money for good causes. A lot of charities and nonprofits do, you know, those 5K runs. You hear about them all the time. Yeah, right. But this one in Colorado Springs is very specific. It's a Where's Waldo 5K. Roughly 3,500 people dressed up as Waldo over the weekend. It was the fourth annual Waldo 5K. Funds from the event went toward local charities working to restore the Waldo Canyon, which suffered a burn scar from a 2012 fire. Some money will also go toward disaster relief in the Colorado Springs area. Finally, it's easy to find Waldo. Where is he? There's tons of He's them right there. There and there and there. <laughs> I remember the show. You wear the little red yeah, stripe the books. there. And of course, the glasses you gotta have. The hat. I say with us, it's 9.39 this morning. We'll be right back after the break.